Someone told me a long time ago that compression is kind of like mom in the car. Sounds odd, I get it but just hear me out. So I made a complete guide just talking about this. And if you want that cheat sheet, you can just scroll down right now and click the top link in the description and you can have it for free. But in this video, I really wanted to dive in into each individual knob on a compressor and really talk about how it relates to that analogy and how you can start to feel compression more than you are hearing it. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Andrew Barr with Producing in the Box where I teach you how to make incredible sounding music without analog gear. And in fact, I think you're better off without it. So let's jump jump right on in and actually take a look at this compressor. So the first knob you really wanna pay attention to is the input gain. Now this is essentially how much volume is going into this compressor. Now this is really important. If you just pay attention over here on your meter, you really want like negative 18 to negative nine as an input. That just works well for most plugins. In fact, even in most plugin manuals, if you ever read those, they actually tell you to hit around negative 18 to negative nine. Negative nine is almost like analog clipping. So like if you have an analog modeled meter, by the time you hit like negative nine, it'll actually be at unity in the analog stage. So between negative 18 to negative nine here on your meter, is gonna be great. Now you can adjust this of course with your input gain. So of course, if you have too much input gain, you're gonna cause problems. And if you have too little, you might wanna just boost it up a little bit. So let's take a look here. You don't ever call me, it's pathetic. Oh, I almost gave you my devotions. You were playing my emotions just to- So you can see I'm hitting like negative 12, which is just great. And I'm kind of peeking around negative nine, which is, which is great for us. So. I really don't have to mess around with the input gain too much. Now there is the makeup gain. As you compress things, they get a little bit quieter and then you might wanna make it up with the makeup gain. So as far as the input gain is, this is essentially how loud your cell phone is going into the Bluetooth of your car or the old aux cable, if you remember those. So if you have your phone cranked all the way up or at least setting at unity, sometimes it would actually cause distortion. You might have to like click it down like that one or that two. So you wanna make sure that your input gain is sounding really, really Really good. Now this threshold here is how loud the song has to get before mom decides to turn it down. You know, you're jamming out to a song and then all of a sudden she reaches over and hits that volume knob in the car and it just kind of kills your vibes. In this case, you want to actually kill the vibe just a little bit so that way it doesn't get out of control. So I will show you exactly how this works. So we're gonna play this vocal here. That blue little dot there is how loud the signal is. And then this lighter blue dot is where it has to be in order to start turning it down. So if I have it set up here, it's actually doing nothing because the blue dot never gets that loud. Mom's thinking it's okay. Now it's starting to get too loud. She's turning it down. You can see how far she's turning it down by how far we bring the threshold down. So really that's like one of the most important knobs you're probably gonna use inside of a compressor is your threshold. So now we're going on to the ratio and this is essentially how aggressively mom grabs that volume and turns it down. If you have a 20 to one ratio, she's just gonna pop, flatline it. Very aggressively grab that volume knob and turn it down. And you can actually see that right there. Now, if we bring that out, we can do like a one to one ratio. That's no compression at all. And then if we bring it to like a two to one up to like a four to one, you're gonna get a little bit more natural compression. She's still gonna let some of the loudness go through. She's kind of a chill mom. But if it's 21, she's strict. Bam, leveling everything out right now. So I'll show you how this works. I'm going to set a threshold, a pretty aggressive threshold, and then I'm just gonna mess around with the ratio and you can see how chill or how aggressive mom is. One to one ratio is no compression. See, she's leveling it right out not letting anything come through. So 20 to one is really great if you really need to like level something out and just get real, uh, a lot of control over it. But honestly, like a four to one ratio is really, really good for most instruments, guitars, drums, vocals. Just kind of play around with this and really feel how you want it to sound. It's less on hearing and more on feeling. So the next knob is the attack knob. And this is how quickly mom reaches to grab that volume knob. Right here, it's a set at 15 milliseconds. So there's 15 milliseconds before that compressor kicks in, right? 
So if we set it to zero or 0.1 milliseconds, which is the lowest we can set it to, it's like she's grabbing it as soon as it gets loud, right? If we turn it all the way up here to 400 milliseconds, it's gonna take her 400 milliseconds to actually reach over and grab that volume knob. This is great if you wanna let those transients cut through. So there's like a really nice transient right here. Um, I will show you what this sounds like here. Get it. Get it. And if I set it to a 400 millisecond attack, it's gonna take 400 milliseconds before that compressor decides to actually grab that signal. Get it. So it's not grabbing that. Get it. Get it. Now, if we turn it, the attack down like this, right? Get it. Get it. See how it almost dips? Get it. She's slapping that volume down. Now, if I turn it back up here. Get it. To get it. To get it. See that? See the difference there? When that attack is low, it doesn't allow any transients to come through. Now, I just kind of turn this up until some transients come through and it sounds a bit natural. You don't want to smash it too hard depending on the signal that you're looking for or like if you're doing like drum rooms and stuff like that, it's cool to have like a really fast attack and then like a uh, mid to slow release to kind of give that like pumping effect. Sometimes even faster of a release will like allow that to come back up. So now the next knob, surprise, surprise, is the release knob. This is where you come in. This is how quickly you reach over and turn the volume back up after mom just turned it back down. So now, of course, if you have set it at a one millisecond here, um, you and mom are gonna be fighting all the time. Get it. And it's gonna cause that pumping effect. Let's really slam this and I'll show you what it, what it does here. Just to get it. You can see it's like just fighting back and forth and you see that uh, the gain reduction here, that little yellow meter, is just going all over the place. Just to get it. And it causes some issues. Now, you wanna give it just a little bit of breathing room. Now, you can go all the way up to two seconds, at least on this compressor, and that's two seconds after that you start to reach over and turn the volume knob back up. Just to get it. See how slow oh, it takes to come back up? But the truth so if I turn it down to a reasonable amount, which is like, you know, around 50 to like 100 milliseconds, at least for this vocal I found. But the truth so loud, no more secrets now, I'm on overload. It's allowing it to come back up during like some of these parts here. So it's louder here. And then as it starts to get a little bit quieter, it's allowing it to come back up. This is how quickly you reach over. Turn that volume knob right back up. So now the last knob is the knee. And this is essentially like how bluntly mom grabs that volume knob and turns it down, right? Does she turn it down slowly? Does she turn it down quickly? Now ratio and knee kind of go hand in hand, right? So if you have a really hard ratio and a really hard knee, everything's just gonna get cut right off and leveled everything out. Now, if you have a softer knee and a little bit more loose ratio here, you can actually get a decent sound with this compressor. Load, ready to explode. Time to call you out cause you messed around. Don't need you no more. So that's a really nice sound for that compressor. I'm really liking th how things are sounding. I want to allow the transients to come through just a little bit uh, because I still want it to sound like a natural vocal and not just like a leveled out sound. Time to call you out cause you messed around. Don't need you no more. No. So now that we've done our compression here, it's actually turning the volume down because we have gain reduction here. Time to call you if I turn out the compressor off, around, don't need it actually gets louder. That's where the makeup gain comes in. And now you can have it set to auto if you like. Um, I prefer to actually adjust it manually. So like, for example, if I'm dropping it down by like, let's say 60 B. Time to call you out cause you messed around, don't need you no more. Yeah, so I'm getting around 6 dB of gain reduction. I can just turn the makeup gain to about 6 dB and bring that volume back up. So that way it's level matched to the original. Time to call you out cause you messed around, don't need you no more. Now you are gonna get a little bit more of perceived loudness with the compressor because you're kind of like squashing things up just a little bit, making the quieter parts sound louder. So that's where your perceived loudness comes from. But essentially it's about the same signal level. Time to call you out cause you messed around, don't need you no more. Now, if you want to go deeper in compressing vocals, I have a video that shows you exactly how to compress vocals the right way. If you want to know what I'm talking about, click this video right here. Little spoiler alert, I use two compressors to get that result. So if you want to learn more about that, click that video there. And now as always, go create.